Well, hello there. Welcome to the Tech Enabled Agent. I am Maps Technology Coach Brett Chigru. What a seriously exciting session we have today. We have a special guest, a family reunion panelist, and we are going to talk about how she has command set up in a way that you may have not thought of. She uses the what we call Gary in the box method. And if you haven't seen this amazing YouTube video where Gary pulls out this big box, which is his entire business, the, our guest today has built her business in a similar fashion to do over 100 transactions a year all by herself. No help, no sign guy, no TC. And she literally follows up with her past clients by moving someone from January after she calls them to April. And that's how she works through her business. And you might be asking yourself, well, how does that relate to command? She is now setting up her command that way so smart plants can take over. And the Gary in the box method that she's become a mega agent using can start to utilize AI and automation and find the gaps and provide a more personalized experience. So let's stop talking about it and get to today's coaching. So I wanted to start here for a reason. Have you been making your business too complicated, right? Take Julia, who I just mentioned, our guest who we'll bring on in a sec. She simply follows up with people on pieces of paper and moves them about boxes, and she does over 100 transactions a year that way, right? So here is uh, Jill, who's uh, a team leader, actually Marcus Center, I'll be appearing at tomorrow, says this, she quotes Gary Keller here from Coaches Training at Family Reunion. This business is not complicated. You lead generate. When you have too much business, you leverage. People overcomplicate this. And that is what we're going to do today. We're going to take all these wonderful things that Command can do and will do and is about to do and is currently doing, and we're going to make it simple for you. So um, are all the options of the Command and Kelly leaving you wondering which way to go? Well, today is your day to uh, maybe get a little more clarity on that. So today in the Tech Enabled Agent 12, we have a guest, my friend, family reunion panelist, Julia Hurley. I know at least one of you in this wonderful program saw um, Julia at family reunion on a 7.30 a.m. panel because she came up and said hello afterwards. She uses the Gary in the box method. She has started to tag the members of her follow-up box and command. So in a full financial quarter, smart plans can take over. So I want you to think of this in relation to how you run your business. How have you been running your business? How have you been following up with people? Do you look at something new like command and go, ah, what am I gonna do? That is the point of today's session. So without further ado, let's bring on Julia. So uh, my friend here, Julia Hurley, and I say friend, I've known her for a month. <laughs> it's but been a boy, great month. <laughs> it has been a great month, but boy, do we talk a lot. We right? do. She does 105 transactions a year with no help. Um, right. Julia is using what we call the Gary in the box method for follow up with your past clients. So, you know what? I could explain this to them, but why don't you? What's that? Great question. Hi, everybody. Julia Hurley. So Gary in the box. I actually have it here. I think you have a photo of it to show everyone after this. It's very interesting. It is very small boxes labeled by month. And when I close a deal in January, I put them automatically just on a slip of paper with their cell phone number and email address and their mailing address on the back. And I pop that into the April box. And when April comes around, I pull out all of the contacts from April. I contact each one. I make a note in their spreadsheet that is now command and put them in the next quarter for a quarter call at that time. So every 90 days, every past client receives a Ford method phone call. Hmm. And we're actually going to, um, we're going to both role play and go through what you do on the phone. Um, and we were role playing yesterday. You're <laughs> amazing on the phone. So I'm really, <laughs> you're welcome. So I'm really excited for people to see that. Um, you're, you never gave me an opportunity to get off the phone. And I mean that in a good way. <laughs> Um, and that's because you were so busy asking questions, asking about me and genuinely like being delightful on the phone that you right. can't get off the phone until you do the ask. Right. Right. So uh, let's quickly go back through what we're doing here today. So Julia is simply taking those boxes and she's creating tags for the month. So if she calls you in March, she spaces that out 
right? So that's what, March, June, we're all gonna see how bad I am at math at this. <laughs> right, so it's March, June, what, September and December, something like that? December. Correct. Woohoo! And um, what we've done, and I'm gonna show you this in command, is we've replaced that with tags. And the reason that Julie has replaced that with tags is that smart plans can take over. And she has this very simple process for always being able to follow up. So no matter how much technology changes, not just in the next couple of weeks or months, but years, she has this base system always working for her, right? So let's, uh, <laughs> I love this. So I took a small snippet from the Gary in the Box YouTube video, right? And it's very simple process. We'll just play, I grabbed like 15 seconds of it. So, uh, here is a YouTube video. I don't know how old this is, but it isn't new. There is Gary and the box he built this business with. Oh my goodness. And I want to think, I want us to think of command today as our box, right? You think of it that way, right, Julia? I do. I actually watched this video twice when you sent it to me. Uh, two things. Love that computer screen in the back. Looks like it weighs a good 27 pounds. And uh, <laughs> this box is command. It's This video, I believe, was recorded in 1987, which tells us that Gary Keller has had this foresight and dream to complete this project for a very long time for his agents. So the conversation with this young lady here was, let me show you how you go through your day-to-day -day process of your follow-ups. He color coded them. He put them by month. He put them alphabetically by purchase price. You can get as detailed as you would like to make sure that each conversation is tailored to each client. And he was keeping them in that box. Yeah, that's the business. and. Never mind all these things that we've been sold in real estate over all these years. And now that we're a technology company, we have these tools ourselves. Sometimes there's, it feels like too many options, right? There are quite a few options inside of command. So making a list of the things that you really mm -hmm. find important is going to be helpful here. Yeah. But also thinking about ways of keeping it simple. Correct. Right? So speaking right. of keeping it simple, <laughs> here's Julia's box. Oh, this is oh my business. Gosh. Right? I don't know. That's from Target. Gary something. Keller doesn't see this today. <laughs> I am sending it to him when we're done. Now, this is, it's a little hard to see with some of the glare from your photo, but each little handle there has a month, right? Yes. And so you have inside these boxes someone's contact information, correct? Correct. So you, yes. pull, you pull out, say it's, you pull out February, you call the person from February, and then you move them three months down the road to the next box? Correct. So as I'm covering some of their personal information, here's them, both of their email addresses and then where they moved to. So I can ask them how that's going. So I sold a home for them. This is where they went. So every conversation revolves around the new home, all of those things. So if I flew down to Lenore City this afternoon and um, ran into your office and ran away with this box, what would happen to your business? My business, thank goodness, has been backed up on Google Sheets. So this is an extra added step that made it easier for me to filter through each of the clients. However, if you don't have your data in one place, it's going to be extremely difficult. So if this were the only method for you, you would be very disruptive to the future of the company. Mm -hmm. Right, so simply you pull the contact info out of the box, you call the past client, you use the script that we're gonna um, go over in a little bit. And then like we talked about, we're replacing this method as amazing as it is. Um, <laughs> when, and it really is, like I say that with love. Um, we're replacing it with tags so that right. someone else, like maybe you can have some other people work with you at some point since you do over a hundred transactions all by yourself. That's the dream, um, that's the dream. <laughs> someone else can step in and maybe call the internet leads and the text leads and all those leads and you can stick to doing what you do well Right. which is speaking to people you know, right? You're, I've heard you on the phone, you have this great database of people, you're a local politician, you know everybody. So your job should be focusing on the people you know, that would right. be this box, and all those other leads that come into command um, that are not tagged with people in this box should be somebody else, right? 100%, Gary's correct, leverage, definitely mm -hmm. leverage your people. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's show people how to do this. Okay. Okay, so we're going to be focusing on past clients, um, and I'm going to only add one tag. I don't need to 
make you guys watch me add a tag four times. So let's go through this quickly together. I'm going to go full screen. So here's our screen, right? All right, it's our command screen. We have add neighborhoods. That's stuff we're going to be doing soon. Looks like, hold on one sec. Looks like, there we go. A little screen froze there for a second. So all right, we have add neighborhoods. You can see all there's our contact info. Here's Jane Test. Thought it'd be nice enough not to give away Julia's database's contact info. Appreciate right? it. <laughs> where we can add opportunities, right? We can add notes. We can add an activity. We can add all sorts of stuff. You're starting to see more and more things pop up on command, which is great. So I'm going to edit here by I click that edit pencil. And Jane Test is one of these people, say, in Julia's boxes there. Then I'm going to add a custom tag, right? So you want to do this with a custom tag. Because believe it or not, no one has month tags inside of command. So you want, I'm adding June, just as an example here. And I can add all four, right? So I could add June, then September, and so forth. And I just simply go down there and I click Save. And what I know is when I have all of these months, a smart plan is going to be able to pull these tags and be able to automate this follow-up for me, add in more personalized touches on top of me also still doing my job as a real estate agent, like calling people, right? Um, so we're gonna add our opportunity. So we're gonna say quickly, we had a successful phone call with Jane Test and I'm gonna create an opportunity and I fill out my info here and you know, there's the client, there's Jane Test, give her a close date. And this is what happens, right? We go through command while we're calling people and we create some type of success. Julie was calling her clients this morning. She got a listing out of it. So she would go into command and she would add this opportunity. All right, I'm going to put my commission, my phase, all these different things you do, right? It's an appointment. It's scheduling. And we create the opportunity after we put in some notes. Always put in notes. Good notes is, give you a lot less stress. And that's it, really. We, we create our opportunity. It's done. It's that simple. The, the not easy part is you actually have to do it. So, you know, here's our full screen with our info, right? We can do um, net sheets, as we call them, for people if we want. We can do all sorts of stuff. You can be able to pull the listing in from the KWS soon, if not already, depending on when you're watching this. So it's going to put in a sample here, and I connect it to that, and I'm done. It's pretty easy. Now, it's pretty easy to set up. I'll bring Julia back on with me, right? So it's pretty easy to set up. However, you still have to actually do the work of creating the opportunity, right? <laughs> <laughs> I so think you know, that's, that's some effort. You have to put some effort into this. Simple, yes. not easy really is a thing. Gary is correct. 100%. Uh, it's very simple to create an opportunity. It's not so simple to create an actual opportunity that takes numbers and work and opening up the phone and calling people. So we are going to role play um, one. We're going to role play one of your phone calls. Oh, and okay. So I'm going to show everyone our script here. First, we'll talk about it. So you use Ford, which is family, occupation, relationships, and desire, or for family, occupation, religion, and experiences. Right. Um, so how do your phone calls go when you use this method? Actually, they go really well. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to call you. Would that be okay? <laughs> of course. Okay. Ring, ring. Hello. Brett, this is Julia Hurley, your favorite real estate agent. I hope I've caught you at the best possible time to share some successes with you today. How are things? Oh, things are pretty well, Julia. I'm so excited to hear that. So this morning I was looking through some of my favorite clients' Facebook pages and I noticed that you all just had a new baby and I hope you got my baby gift. I just wanted to check and see, are you sleeping? How are things going with the family? Man, a kid never sleeps, but we did get that orange Vols shirt, so thank you. You are so welcome. I think of you constantly. You're so important and valuable to me, and I just want to make sure that I touch base with you and see how that family life is going, and I'm so glad it's going well. How's your occupation? How's the job? If you're not getting any sleep at home, how's that going for you at work? You still surviving? Lots of coffee, I bet. Oh, yeah. I down some coffee, and then I jump in front of a camera a couple times a week. <laughs> <laughs> and I bet everybody appreciates that. You gotta get a, get, a, get a lot of feedback from that, I'm guessing. How's that going? Oh, it's going pretty well. You know, people have 
ask a lot of good questions and um, it's really a joy to get to meet all these people that we get to help. And they're nice enough not to point out the bags under my eyes. No, oh, that is so sweet of them. And I know it's valuable to you to help other people. And as, as you're telling me about helping other people, is there anything that I can help you with to move any of those relationships forward that you've built maybe in your conversations at work or any of your personal relationships? As you know, I love to help you as well. Is there anything that you think that I can do for you to build a better relationship? You know, we've been looking for more... Um we're older parents who have a lot of parent friends, like you were looking for more groups and people to connect with. Okay, that sounds great. In fact, it sounds so great. I was just looking the other day at a new build subdivision on half acre lots, which is really helpful. Starter families in an eight out of 10 school district. I don't know how you feel about possibly moving. I know that we purchased your home and you loved it a couple of years ago. How would that work out if we actually sat down and spoke? Would I be okay to come over and speak with you and the family about that? I'd love to see the baby. <laughs> Babies are so fun, especially when you get to give them back. Um, <laughs> It's, um, you know, I, I miss having an office. Um, you know, I'm spending a lot of time now working at the kitchen table, which I didn't have to previously. Yeah, well, we can absolutely make sure you get that bonus room on top. I don't know how you feel about that. I know your price range. The last time that we sold a house with you was perfect for that fit. They just didn't have this subdivision available. I would love to come and meet with the two of you. And I hope the baby's awake when I get there. How's Tuesday at four? Yeah, I think we could do four on Tuesday. Well, I'm going to see both of you there. I'm going to currently send you an invitation in our Google calendar to make sure that you receive it. And I'm going to add your wife as well. I'm hoping she's taking a nap right now. And I just absolutely cannot wait to see both of you and hug that baby. Okay, Julia. Great. Thank you. Awesome. While I've got you on the phone, just one last thing I would like to ask. I just want to close this conversation out with thanking you to take your time for me today. You are a valuable person in my life. And I want to make sure that there's something that's inside of you or something that you wanted to do with your family, maybe a trip or an experience or something that you've wanted to do that you may think that I have a great vendor that I could help you with that. I'd love to share an experience with you and your family. Is there something I can help you obtain? Hmm. We've been looking to bike more. Well, that's exciting. It just so happens that I have a vendor program with a cycling company here that does cycling tours. And I'd love to set you up on a tour on me. How does that sound? That sounds fantastic. Great. We'll talk about that on Tuesday as well. And I'll bring some information. I look forward to seeing both of you. And as always, on Tuesday, you know me well enough to know that I'm going to ask for a referral. So between now and Tuesday, if you just so happen to be talking about me coming to visit you at work and you hear, hey, I might be looking to buy or sell a home, say, my friend Julia is going to take care of that for you and I'm going to give you her information. Would you do that for me? I would be happy to. Brett, I appreciate you so much. And I absolutely cannot wait to see both of you on Tuesday. We'll talk soon, okay? Okay. Thank you. So and you don't, pretty much you don't miss. That's one of my favorite things just, about when we role played this yesterday. Yeah. And it was, I know what script you use to call, but I've never, you know, not, I don't live in Tennessee. I've um, never gotten a lead gen call from you. You control the conversation and you ask a lot of questions. Um, ask a lot of questions. Yeah. And I know a lot, and a lot of agents struggle with, okay, great. I've got them in command and I'm emailing them. <laughs> now I call, what do I say? Well, and that is why in the handouts, whether you're watching live or on demand, we have this script, this exact slide you can see up on the screen here. So that way you can use this as a guide, right? Because you, every time I said something, you asked a question. Right. I highly recommend also before you're contacting these people, pull their Facebook pages up, Twitter, Instagram, find out what's going in in their life um, and just make sure you have some questions to ask. You don't have to go in order, but you mm -hmm. definitely want to hit all of the four major points in their life. Yeah. I mean, you ask questions, you ask connecting questions that um, people genuinely, this is coming from a guy who talks into a microphone and camera for a living, but people genuinely love talking about themselves. And so you set them up to do so about things right. they care about, right? In this conversation, I had a baby, right? I actually have a kid who's almost four. I put a photo on Facebook this morning of him hugging our new garbage can. I saw um, that. <laughs> <laughs> right. But you would, if you were calling me, you would have stalked that and you could have made a joke to that. Correct. Um, and which is perfect. It's exactly what you want to do. You also would have seen my career stuff on there, right? You would have seen me at family reunion running around 
taking videos with you. Um, you did the job and then you just kept asking clarifying questions. And what did you do? You set an appointment, you asked for a referral, and apparently I'm going on a bike tour, which yeah. literally, if I live near you, I'd be completely interested in like, that sounds amazing. So as a real person in your area, you have just came from contribution and helped me. Correct. And I can, I, I being before I became me as a new agent, I can already hear the drunk monkey talking in my head of, well, I don't have these vendor programs. I don't have anything of value to add my client. I don't, I can't, I this. So let me reassure these agents out here that are already overwhelmed with their businesses they're currently running. They've got a lot of sphere of influence. Command is new. This is a lot of things that are happening in their businesses and their lives that are piling up. And you're just saying, well, just add a vendor program. Oh, that's so easy. It's not. It's not easy. It is simple. And you absolutely want to make sure that if you like doing something, that you ask your clients what they enjoy doing. And then you seek out a vendor that can provide that for you and for your clients and make sure you just add them to your monthly list or quarterly list of, hey, vendor, I've got seven clients that love to cycle and I would like to provide them with a discounted cycling tour. And I'm going to expect you to do that with me. And here's why. And here's what I'm going to offer. Seven new people for you. What's my discount here? And then you follow up. Yeah. And then you add them into command. You tag them as vendor. Correct. Right. And um, task management, I know a lot of people will watch this on demand, but a few days from this session, as we do it live, task management comes, you can actually start seeing the ability to add them in there right now if you go to add an activity. So that way, you not only are following up with home sale traditional leads, you now have local business people, and we all know that local businesses, local business people support local business people. 100%. So now you have a great referrer of business. And Absolutely. all you did was tag them in command and pick up the phone. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah. ask. If you don't ask, you don't get. Yes. You know, Sorry. yesterday when we were role playing, you said, I have this whole thing against using the phrase checking in. It's, just, it's a drunk monkey probably. And um, you said it. And I wanted to push back on that. But you just kept going and asking questions at that moment just it left. And that, that was because you were being intentional on the phone. You know, yeah. when we think about technology coaching, we don't think about the phone, but 92% of business is still done on the phone. Correct. And it will be even through command. Oh, heck yeah. yeah. Right. We have things that will help you like Twilio and you can integrate like a dialer, like phone burner via PySync, right? Right. And you can work straight through command, but ultimately it still comes down to no matter what you use, doing the job. Ultimately, so, it still comes down to scripting. So, mm -hmm. and that, you and go. your, and this Ford slide that I showed a few minutes ago is in our handouts, both uh, live and on demand. So we have Absolutely. one more script, and um, it's a very simple script. As you know, I'm a firm believer in texting, and the reason I am a firm believer in texting, while having a phone conversation is definitely better, it can be hard to get people on the phone. So very we talked true. about ways you text people. So I'm going to show everyone. We're going to go off camera here, at least me, and I'm going to show everyone your text script. So you okay. always leave a voicemail. And yeah, I, I know because we talk all the time, you have an older client base, right? You're in a retirement community. You have a lot of retirement communities around you and you're kind of in like a bedroom community for Knoxville. So you did acknowledge to me, though, that pretty much anyone below 40 may not listen to your voicemail. And that's OK. Yes. Um, so text has a 98 percent open rate, like I say, almost every single session. And while you shouldn't hide behind text, you should call first. You have a very intentional text script here. So I'll read it to everybody. It says, happy Monday. Looking to capture a few moments of your day to let you know how much I appreciate you as a friend. Let's commit. I love this part. Let's commit to connecting this week. Right? You, you kind of, it wasn't like doing the ask, but you're now kind of committing them to talking to you. Look forward to catching up with you, Julia Hurley, your realtor for life. That's pretty simple. Absolutely. It's very simple. And when people receive your text, they receive your voicemail first. They're going to ignore the voicemail. Some people, most people, I have text to talk. So my voicemail will actually tell me what it said. It will send it to me in a text. So I don't actually have to listen to that. If it's important, I will listen to the tonality and make sure that it's not urgent, that I'm not misreading what text to voicemail is telling me it's saying. Uh, but then I'll also just follow up immediately with this cut and paste text. I love to start a conversation off with happy 
it's happy Monday, happy Tuesday. So it mm -hmm. automatically sets the tone. Right. If you said, Hey Brett, it's Julia. Like I can feel, even though I'm reading the text, I can, f you have never had a moment of low energy, but I can feel low energy coming. Right. Correct. So, and also the happy, whatever day of the week it would be is a reflection of genuinely who you are and your, transmitting that to the other person essentially via text, right? Your essence is, right. to over explain it, your essence is coming across via text. Um, and that's if really important. If they've done important. business with me, they know this personality is very exciting, very forward, very giving. And when I say happy Monday, it's actually in this, this should be exclamation point. Um, it's usually like, hey, happy Monday, it's Julia. So it's one of those, look at this, look at this text and read my my text voicemail and you'll absolutely know why I'm calling. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things you mentioned was you copy and pasted it. So this, everything is a system. Yes. And so this is, if it's, we do this live on Tuesday, this session, if it's Tuesday, I've got happy Tuesday in this whole script written down in my notepad and I've copied and pasted it and now I'm ready to go. Because every time I call and I get your voicemail, I, you pop this in, text it and you move on to the next person. Absolutely. And we know that text gets it has an incredibly high reply rate. Um, even if that reply is, hey, I'm at work, I can't talk right now, that gives you the opportunity to set up a time in which you can talk. Absolutely. So you can always reach out and say, I understand that you're busy. Um, would today at 5.30 p.m. be a better time to connect? Perfect. All right. So let's look at your tagging. I could talk about your <laughs> phone prowess all day, but let's talk about your tagging. Um, so we have tags for past client and SOI, right? You really right. focus on past clients with your tagging. Correct. And so just to explain people the way this goes through, bust out my fun laser pointer here. Um, oops, that didn't work at all. There we go. So you're going to tag past client and we know that is you have those here in system tags. If you wanna go in and tag months, like Julia, you can pre-make these in settings to make your tags, or you can just start doing it here from the contact field, right? You go into custom tags and you type in March, June, September, December, and that will put people in the same flow as your boxes, right, Julia? Correct, absolutely. Okay, and now I have on here, because you were certain to make sure that I pointed this out, <laughs> that past clients and sphere of influence because SOI does not mean that they've bought or sold the house with you, could be a completely different phone call. So since this is a coaching program, what is a difference between say a referring SOI phone call and a past client phone call? That's a really great question. So that is a very important uh, distinguishing factor for me personally, as you uh, brought up, I am a local elected official. My sphere of influence is different from my clients. So there will be people who will come to me with uh, specifics on a family member or a friend or a colleague, possibly, uh, for example, Memphis or Johnson City, who they just come to me and know that I am going to provide them with a person which can help their family member. So that is a sphere of influence I have created in the circle right in the mm -hmm. rings who are not necessarily in the ring of clients, but they are very important and will continue to bring you business. They've never done business with you, but they bring you and they bring you business. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's perfect. Thank you for explaining that. So um, down here, we talked about this yesterday. Um, and now just so you guys know, Julia is an original, despite her paper boxes is an original member of labs um, she may have sent Gary Keller like a 22 page paper. Um, she very much loves this stuff. And we talked about what captured, connected and qualified would mean to you guys. Right. And so, um, on our slide here, we have captured like a lead comes in. It's a not met. Would you agree, Julia? hundred percent. Okay. And so now connected, you've spoken and now qualified. Say that one more time. You've spoken. Like spoken. you've spoken, not had texted, a not emailed, spoken. Oh yeah, text or emails yes. kind of is very easy. I mean, Gmail has auto replies now, right? Thanks. Correct. You're the best. That's not really a conversation. Yeah, that's you not have, a connection. No, you have had a you have talked on the phone. I meet people via Zoom and Hangouts or FaceTime. You've like had a real conversation. Correct. Um, and then qualified, or you've seen them in person. Or qualified 
is they are pre-approved, an actual seller, or they have previously purchased, right? Like if you can buy or sell a house, you can usually buy or sell a house in the future. So I actually use the word qualified as qualified client, whether that's active, mm -hmm. retired, past. So the qualified word doesn't mean pre-qualified as in a purchase. It's just a qualified client. They mm -hmm. are a client. Exactly. So I'm sure there's someone going, what do we do with these three bubbles here? That's what you do, right? Captured, they've just come into your system. They could be a text lead, a Facebook lead, whatever. Connected, you have had an actual conversation. And qualified, they are ready to go or they have been previously ready to go and likely are going to be a great client in the future. Correct. All right, so we are going to go to Q&A in one sec, and I'm really looking forward to that part. But quickly, um, everyone always asks, how did we find coaching on demand? And that is down here at fasttrack.mykajabi.com. All right, it is Q&A time, Julia. So let me open up our questions oh. and, and read them to us. Okay. Um, how far back does, oh, here's a good question. How far back does a sold data go for neighborhood pages? Is the time adjustable to go back, for example, three months, six months to a year? Um, the data has only been going back at this moment. And you can, you, put, you were texting these today, right? But it's only been going back a few months, correct? Well, the data on sold neighborhoods is coming from uh, neighborhood or neighborhoods. Next door. Mm -hmm. next door, thank you, next door neighborhoods. So it depends on how early your subdivision or your neighborhood has joined next door as to how much information will be there. For example, Teleco Village here in Loudoun County, Tennessee was started in 1982. There is an exuberant amount of information on that because they were one of the first people that joined next door neighborhoods. So now they have something around 20, 2700 residents there. So there's a lot. It depends. Okay. Um, so let's see here. Matthew asks, so how do we put her on a smart plan that will remind us to call her in July? And so we can both, <laughs> by the way, I keep picturing him calling you for some reason with this question. Um, that's exactly why we're one of the reasons we're tagging this way, because we know that smart plans as we go through this session are a few weeks out. And we know that if we tag these things correctly, the smart plans are going to pull the tags when we set Perfect. them up. And that is going to not only make sure that your box of cards is done virtually, it's gonna fill in those gaps with, they're gonna have customized neighborhood pages. Um, they'll have customized touches from the app that tells them things like, hey, you should get the roof checked or my area beginning October, hey, make sure you blow out your sprinklers. Um, so, so this is exactly the class that I taught for transition to command mm -hmm. or the panel that I sat on, thank you. And this is exactly the conversation that we had is, uh, the questions are more geared toward what are we going to do with this? What are we going to do with this? When is this product becoming available? When can I do this? The number one focus, as Gary Keller has stated on several occasions and drilled in on several comments during family reunion is database, 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 because it does not matter when the smart plans are rolled out. If your database is not tagged properly and you don't have the information in place, the smart plan is not going to do that for you. You still need to get your database together, tagged properly and ready to go. Yes, just dumping a bunch of data into the database does not make it magically work. Correct. <laughs> As a man who individually added about 80 contacts to something <laughs> last night, I'm aware. All right. However, those contacts are now perfectly tagged um, and ready to go. And one of the things that we've talked about in our coaching program here is something that Cody Gibson brought up recently. Are you? Do you wanna pay the price now or the cost later? Right. So do you wanna pay the price um, Cody is the king of those one-liners. I'm loving he, those. He is. <laughs> he's he's got them. Do, do you want to pay the price of sitting up to 11 o'clock and adding contacts or the cost later of a bunch of bad data? Right. It's, it's that simple, really. So um, we have a question here from Mark. Mark asks, is there a way to add a specific call date and command? Because we currently do this system, but we have – oh, Mark's actually using the boxes. Um, but we have tasks or call dates of the contact. Instead of tagging the month, we want a specific date that we can filter and pull up the task for February 26th. So um, inside the technology mastermind, Josh team has been talking about how task management version one is coming out um, in the next few days. Um, if you go into a contact right now, and of course, as I say this, I'm sure we'll remove it for a few hours to fix it uh, or to like optimize it. You can add an activity and you can add a phone call for a date. Um, so go in and play with that, Mark. Right. And then you'll be able to 
start setting up tasks for people. However, keep doing the tags. Because even though you might have a June tag and you set a June 10th phone call reminder, um, you want those smart plans pulling those tags to really build out your automation, right? Let's see here. When would you use past client? Tracy asks, Julia, and you can answer this one. When would you use past client versus past buyer or past seller? I guess she's asking like a niche question. So That's a great question. Those are tags that Brett set up for me on our 2018 lead sheets. Uh, currently, I've just been tagging the year. So it's been 2016 buyer, 2016 seller, 2017 buyer, 2018 seller. That implies that they had already sold or purchased. I always tag the word past client, period. So I've been adding the words, the tag past client, and then the year 2018 buyer or and 2018 seller, depending on. So that's actually the separation that I have been currently using. And that's how you determine what year they bought or sold and if they are a past client. Mm -hmm. That's actually a really good question. All right, so we have another one. Um, it says, Shannon, I hate when I try people's last names, Fawner. <laughs> Shannon asks, I or says, I haven't found that anything in my tri-county area in neighborhoods. Do not all states use this resource. I'm in Illinois. Um, That's a really, that. really great question. And it is something that labs are working overtime on. They've genuinely been working 24 hours a day. I want to say Josh team sleeps four hours a day working on these things. Rural, I'm serious, rural areas of the country are not necessarily going to have the same data as large cities. So as neighborhoods and nextdoor.com start working diligently together with Keller Williams, these things will become more available. Again, let me stress, neighborhoods have to choose to join Nextdoor. That's true. Yes, and that is one of the common questions I've gotten. Um, like I live in a city, right? So I have a boatload of neighborhoods near me. It's a piece of cake. And I'm like, wow, these things work great. It's a classic city guy move. Right? <laughs> to where, thank you, my rural friend. And um, to where we started going through, like somebody sent me a thing about a month ago from this rural part of Maine they live in. And it turns out these two ladies just drew the neighborhood lines wrong. They're the two people that started the next door in their area and the neighborhoods were wrong. And so I participated in the next door lab. So I had like one guy I knew in next door. So I connected them and he actually got it fixed. Um, however, the place to start, if you were ever worried about your neighborhood lines, is not actually contacting me. It's actually contacting the person that created the neighborhoods for next door because they're the ones that drew the outline, frankly, and decided where the borders are. And sometimes neighborhoods, well, not sometimes, often, they grow, especially in rural areas, keep getting subdivisions added onto them. All right, so um, Matt says here, he says, so get in the habits of adding tags now, but the smart plans are still rolling out. Yes, I would yes. suggest, I if smart plans were at this or were on at this very second, I would still suggest adding the tags. Oh, uh, 100%, mm -hmm. 100%. If smart plans were on right now, so if smart plans were on right now, what you would want to do is pull that tag. So for example, I would search in the tag bar past client, which will hit all past clients. If I want to send a smart plan or a 33 touch eight by eight or 12 by 12 to a very specific set of those, I would pull out 2015 buyer, past client, smart plan. They're probably ready to sell and buy again. So you're not going to send the exact same smart plan to a 2015 buyer as you would a 2018 buyer that conversation's different. So adding those tags per year is really gonna be helpful. Once smart plans are rolled out, the design will be different. Perfect, good answer. See, I can tell you participated in labs. All right, so <laughs> um, Rich asks, um, when I make an opportunity for a listing, oh, actually we were talking about this before we came on. Uh, when I make an opportunity for a listing, when will command add it to the GCI? My buyer appointments are bringing in, um, I think you meant CGI. My buyer appointments are bringing in CGI numbers, but not the listing. So as we talked about, for now you go in and you add the listing, right? Yes, for now, at this rate, now mine pull from the KWLS, but that is only for active listings. Mm -hmm. What I've currently been doing is when I get a listing appointment, I automatically add that into opportunities. You have to go in like you showed, Brett, and scroll to the bottom and make sure that you are putting in that guesstimation of the home value 
with your guesstimation of your agreed on commission. And then it's going to add that CGI in for you at that point. Once it becomes an active listing, it will pull the correct data and you can edit that as you go. Perfect. Thank you. So um, I'm excited about this question. Someone just asked us to do a role play. Can you do a role play? What script you use with someone you haven't seen for a long time? Say a former coworker you haven't seen for years. So go ahead. So this actually happened to me in bold. Thank you, Russ. <laughs> I always thank my bold coach from four years ago for bringing this out in me. Uh, I was very uncomfortable making some phone calls during bold four years ago due to the fact that I had changed careers and had let a lot of relationships lapse due to my lack of commitment on follow up. And I was very scared to pick the phone up and have these conversations. And I was sitting in the corner and I was having a chat. I'm on a conference call. Um, I was having a chat and um, Russ said, OK, this is what you're going to say. So this is what you're going to say. You're going to say, hey, this is Julia Hurley. And I know that we haven't spoken in quite some time. I take full responsibility for letting our relationship lapse. And I cannot wait to discuss further with you or talk with you at all. I want to see how you're doing this. I'm not calling and asking for anything. Voicemail, obviously. I'm not calling to ask for anything. I just want to make sure that we reconnect and I want to carry on that conversation with you. Could we could we call each other? Could we chat? Could I reach out to you? Would that be OK? Because you need to let that person know you dropped the ball and it's on you and you're taking mm -hmm. responsibility for that action. And then you're going to move that relationship forward. And how? So lay it out there. Just be honest, open and truthful. And if the person on the other line isn't accepting of that, let it go. But I guarantee you, if you reach out to these people and you show them that you're willing to open that door, they're going to walk through it. Mm -hmm. Good answer. All right. So seriously, that's why I left it to really you. Good answer. And Russ at Bold really took that out of me. And I, and I it was emotional for me to have some of those conversations. It's hard to reach back out and tell someone you, you missed their opportunities or their friendship. And they might have felt differently about that than you did. And they may have mm -hmm. perceived that your relationship or friendship is more important and you let that ball drop. So just acknowledging what you did uh, would absolutely move that forward. It's amazing what taking ownership does. 100%. You know, we live in this world at Keller Williams and then in coaching and everything where I can't walk down the hall without being held accountable. Um, but most people do not live in that world, unfortunately for them. And this is the stuff we put. So you have to be the one that's willing to be vulnerable all the time if you want to grow to where you're at or you want to grow this business that you've always dreamed of growing. So Chris asks, sadly, not for us to role play. In regards to proper tags, is there a list of proper tags that we should be aware of? Yes, there are system tags, right? And you can go into any contact and just look at them and start typing some in. Um, the drop down doesn't pull all of them yet as of this morning, but you can start typing in all the ones we would expect. Also, will we need to set up our own drip campaign step by step or will some default campaigns, i.e. 8x8, 33 touch, et cetera, be loaded into command at some point? Um, we're starting to see like outlines of stuff pop up in Sketch House. We're starting to see little things kind of floating around for campaigns in MailChimp. That's why you have to connect your own MailChimp account. So yes, there are actually, I don't know what the real number is, but this morning we saw 14 <laughs> sitting inside of MailChimp. There's there's going to be a lot of things available mm -hmm. for you to purchase and for free, by the way, through Keller Williams itself. So they are creating your systems right now. Currently, again, let me stress, they are literally working 24 hours a day to make sure that these things are available to you. They will not be available today. There will be free ones. You will be able to de design your own in Sketch House and post those as well. Just like eEdge had your pre-generated 12 by 12 that was editable, this will be offering round about the same, just better. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> that's the best word. It's just, just better. Yeah. So um, David here asks, are you entering 12 months or four quarters? Go Vols. She is entering 12 <laughs> Nobody ever yells go NYU for my college. <laughs> go balls. Yeah, go oh fighting gosh. violets. Thank um, you, David. That's so sweet. Yes, David Eric Timmons <laughs> asked if we're doing 12 months or four quarters. Julie is doing 12 months. I'm doing quarter. Well, I'm doing the 12 months. Yes, you're right. Mm -hmm. 12 months with the quarterly call. Yes. yes. So inside, so let's say, for example, Brett is a contact. Brett gets tagged 
through the quarter months. Does that make sense? So mm -hmm. I will tuck him in only January, only April, only July, only October, but all 12 months are a tag themselves. Yes. I think I'm going to further that question and help him out a little more. If I sell someone a home or sell a home for them in January, they automatically get added to April. They get tagged as January, but they will not receive another call until April and on through and then rotate back. Does that make sense? That's to me. Okay. That makes sense. So you put a tag in there with a little breather. Um, Correct. To then start your quarterly follow up. Correct. Okay. So Mark asks, can we clarify how a quote June tag is connected to a smart plan? I can answer that one for you. Okay. Julia. Okay. So <laughs> you're going to be able to set up a smart plan and it's going to be able to base off on the tags you have. So if you want to run a smart plan to people that have June in those four months after they break out in sick accounting, those four months for the next 12 months, um, you can put them in that specific smart plan for follow up. So it'll tell you when to call, when to text. It'll send out certain materials that you want to send out. It'll also send out customized materials like just their neighborhood landing page, right? Their own personalized website for their area for them. It'll include all those things. And that's why we want to think about tagging rather than just adding some reminders and then going, oh, well, now what are we going to send them? Right? Correct. 100%. And you can also do, you want to tag the June call as well or the June sale as sale as well and make sure that that person is aware that it's been one year's two years. Uh, you want to make sure that you do all of those things because two years, your capital gains tax drops off. They may need to upsize, downsize, and they can sell without penalty. So you want to make sure that you tag the year and the month. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. Thank you. So um, is there a way to have command search for duplicates in the database and then delete or archive those duplicates? That is currently a manual process, my friend James. Um, that is the unfun part of switching databases. There is no magic way to do it. We're the only company we've ever seen that actually has mapping involved, um, which is what which is what PySync is. Just I realize that not everyone's a dork like me and you. Um, <laughs> mapping is when the program that you want to bring the stuff into. I'm trying to explain it the world's simplest way I can think of. It finds the similar fields, right? First name, last name, email, different groups, all that stuff and creates that two-way sync so that command and whatever that other source is can work together. So that way, when you're ready, whenever that is, you can just switch over to command or you can run your business in parallel with a, whatever, a top producer or a brevity or whatever your choice is. I was assured by labs this morning that they are absolutely aware that there is a duplication issue and they are very much in charge of working on that right now. So, okay. so um, Dana here asks, I would like to create lead sources of FISBO, expired, SOI, sign call, et cetera. How do I do that? You go to lead source inside the contact field and you create it. Just remember, I can't stress this enough. I've seen a lot of agents databases in my life. <laughs> Fixing agents problems is like a hobby. Um, do not create, you should ultimately have three pr primary sources of business. So when you look at that, go, oh, wow, I've just added my 14th source. You should start thinking, what's my ROI in these sources? But you just simply go into lead source, and if it doesn't exist in there, type it in. If it doesn't exist, add it. Um, Mark asks, is smart plan another word for a drip campaign? It is not, Mark. A drip campaign is your traditional email type campaign or mail that we would think of. A smart plan pulls all those things together, including the automated niche touches for things like neighborhood pages, on top of your phone calls, on top of you can set it up with I'm going to lose some people here. Twilio to start texting them certain things at certain times of the month or year or however you have your smart plan set up. So a smart plan is much more than a drip campaign. It includes the parts of a drip campaign, but it also creates these automated niche touches to where the traditional drip campaign is things that we think of like, turn back the clock. Um, and all the, okay, no one sends that anymore. Um, but those types of kind of stagnant one size fits all. Right? Is that a fair way to put it, Julia? That's very fair. Smart Plans is going to let you customize you your 33 touch. In fact, I would highly suggest because we're so technology forward that you make that 33 double that number 
people automatically start scrolling through Facebook, Instagram, which by the way, you can, you can connect through command to make mm -hmm. sure that your touches are personalized through each one of those systems. So that's going to be another touch. Technology is so fast that you're going to lose some of those touches. What you're touching your clients for is to make sure that you stay top of mind. And in order to keep their attention and create that system, you need a smart plan very much tailored to each person. So if you have people that only live in 37771, which is where I am, I only want to take a specific smart plan and speak to those people 33 times a year, touch mm -hmm. them with a text, a neighborhood. This is what 37771 looks like today. This is the new restaurant. This is what's happening in your area. Because if I send that to somebody in Knoxville, 37934, they're not going to care. So your drip campaign was touching everyone. Smart plans will be specific to each one. Mm -hmm. I have a, I, you made me think of one. I have a neighborhood bike group and right. it's the most random group. My mother wants, cause this is the most random group of people I've ever seen. And it's because it's designed to have just the type of people that live in the neighborhood, old folks, kids, parents, empty nesters, and it brings them together. So if I was to send them a general, 11 county metro area um email they'd never open it but if i just send them specifically stuff from my neighborhood lowry because they are a member of bike lowry Correct. and i put them on that smart plan so they can be updated on their neighborhood community events now i'm farming correct it is going to assist you in farming and circle prospecting mm -hmm. immensely immensely all right so krista here asks will opportunities eventually be able to import docs and contracts automatically or we have to add them manually. Well, there's an entire contract portion yep. that is starting to turn on of command. So um, as long as you're writing contracts inside that software, and I know it's integrating with different types of platforms, all this stuff, it's just gonna scrape right from the contract and there you are. I right. love these questions. It's, it's genuinely, <clears throat> it's how Labs thrives, is to understand how the agents are thinking through the processes of what's here now and what needs to be. Keller Williams is currently negotiating with contracting companies, uh, contracting like paper contracts, <laughs> of who's going to be able to take that and make it worthwhile to all agents in all 50 states. Please remember that each state has their own real estate commission and beginning and getting access to every state's permissionable contracts is going to be a massive undertaking. And again, let me stress, Labs is working 24 hours a day to ensure that this process is working for you. So the, the short answer is yes. The long answer is it's going to take some time to negotiate that out. Mm -hmm. A very good answer. And I'm actually excited for this next question because we already have the answer. Rich asks, is there help is there a help for starting to make landing pages for my active clients that are looking to buy soon? Yes, it's already there. Yeah. Um, the, the reason that we haven't had a tech enabled agent session about it yet is because it's about to get updated. Um, so I don't want to train, I don't training somebody on something and having a change the next day is usually not a good sign of good training. And so I'm waiting on that for a few days. Um, but you can go in there and you can start tinkering with that right now. You can go to your contact field, you can add a neighborhood, and you can start seeing how that works for them, and you can send them that link. Go into the contact field, click add neighborhood, and have fun. At least I, I did it this morning. <laughs> I did it this morning. Perfect. It's Brett. <laughs> Perfect. Um, Jan wants to know if command's gonna integrate with third-party email campaigns like Happy Grasshopper. Um, it integrates perfectly with MailChimp. I have not seen Happy on um, PySync. So um, not this moment, though that is the type of thing if you are a Happy Grasshopper customer, you should ask them about. Um, Go into PySync, scroll to the bottom, and there's mm -hmm. a blue link that specifically states, if you do not see your connection here, let us know what you would like to see connected and we'll work on it. But please remember, and please remember, these third-party vendors have to agree to work with us. It's not the other way around. We want to work with everyone. Gary Keller wants the whole world to work together to keep our company solvent and to, to keep our agents protected. That's his goal. We have to make sure that the third party people we're working with want to work with us. So that's, that's a negotiation that would have to take place at International. Mm -hmm. um, and they have to, of course, agree to our data agreement because our data is protected I will, and it I goes will, to the agents. 
I will spare everyone my soapbox, but people that predate us in this industry gave away all our data. And that was real, they really lacked foresight on that one. And so we're done doing that, right? Like yes. the industry, NAR, yeah. <laughs> the ones that gave away all our data. And Gary is not letting that happen. And I love him for that. Because Same. frankly, Same. giving away the data that I've earned for free is, it's like paying Zillow. You're paying back for your leads. Um, Oh, Don't I skip. use Zillow. <laughs> no, let's not. Let's let people run their businesses as they wish. So, <laughs> so someone asks, so will the email campaigns always be used with a separate vendor, MailChimp, as well as other? So MailChimp essentially is the base for our campaigns, even though you're creating them inside of command. If that makes sense to people, you get several thousand, you can get, what, 12,000 emails a month and 2,000 contacts in MailChimp before you have to pay for anything. And MailChimp is... A wonderfully stable. Um, I use mail. Anybody that receives our newsletter, granted, it's not the world's greatest design. I'm not a great designer. Um, that is from Mailchimp. I send that out once a week. Most recently, yesterday. Um, so let's see here. Cooper asks, where can I find scripts for calls similar to the one we did earlier? Actually, Cooper, it is in the handouts of this webinar. So just click that button, and it is. Let me open up the handout so I can see what I named them. It is named uh, T12 Ford and Four, and T12 uh, Julia Hurley's text script for past clients. And also, there are several. You can. There's actually several videos online of other agents using the Ford and Four mm -hmm. methods. So YouTube is an extremely wonderful place to visit. Mhm. Mm Good point. And we have a contact question. If I connect my E Edge. And my contacts come across as well as sync pi sync with my iCloud. Will I get duplicate contacts? Right now, yeah. Yes. I feel comfortable saying thank you for your head nod. I was like, I feel comfortable saying yes. Um, I can't. Str I don't have my phone connected to command, and that's because my phone contacts are travesty, and I am not. I don't a have my phone contacts connected either. And that's because. I had everything from a weird wipeout of all the names in my phone to another suggestions um, that I've been bringing that back slowly to, frankly, my some a lot of my phone contacts are someone I met once somewhere one random time, and I don't need them inside my um, I don't need them inside my business to be honest. Nothing against them. I just don't need some random pizza place in Des Moines, Iowa. It's like they're not going to buy a house for me in Denver. Right. Um, they may. Um, let's see here. Can you enter leads as multiple sources? 2018 buyer and SOI. Absolutely. And can, yes, I'm just reading. And can we differentiate different types of SOI? Yeah, you would niche the tags okay. down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if, the, if for me, tagging. my SOI, I have my bike group, right? Right. And you might have SOI, your political folks. That's what they're called, I'm sure. And so that allows us to say, okay, we have a sphere of influence and this is this say a few hundred people or whatever. And then we can niche them down into their various buckets, right? I go to a, a local like house church. That's one bucket. I then go to my neighborhood bike group, right? That's another bucket, but they're all falling underneath the sphere of influence. Correct. Yes. Um, somebody has a dot loop question. If it's going to connect to command. Dot um, loop is connected through API currently. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes, it is. You're correct. Um, let's see. Phil has a point, not a question. And Cooper gives us a big yay to his previous question. Phil said something that the rest of the world doesn't work with much of this. I don't know what that means. Um, regardless, I really enjoy By the way, if anyone didn't notice, we intentionally are matching. You will find Julia in orange everywhere. Um, yes. th thank you so much for joining me. So when My Smart pleasure. Plan, when My Smart pleasure. Plans um, launch, you're going to come back, and we're going to show how we set up your Smart Plans to pull yes. the very tags we talked about. Because one of the things I don't want people to do is people sit around and they wait. Well, you know, it's not ready yet. Well, technology's never ready. E Edge was ready, and it was never as good as it was on day one. And that's because it didn't keep evolving. Yeah, I was an ambassador. Absolutely. I was there. I remember. I trained the darn thing for like two years. Yeah. Um, what we know is that we see, we are on a stable platform that we see constantly evolving, growing, getting better every single day, and that lets us run our business intentionally. And it also lets us have um, conversations to where I'm not trying to take what you did in Brivity and put it into my real Valve. 
pulling out CRM names out of my head, we're going to be able to work the exact same way. Um, one of the things I plan on for this very coaching program is when we train smart plans, having smart plans go along with it. So you can use it too. So that way you don't have to then go in and figure out your own smart plan. Um, you can get started with what we're training you on. So I think that the frustration or maybe the creative thought process for some of these agents is I want all of it right now to work so I can understand it. Right. So the, at the core, we're realtors because we want to help people understand their needs and we bring those out through questions on buying or selling homes. And it's always a conversation of I want to understand where you are and how I can best fit into that understanding. This is an evolving door of growth through this prospect of command and what it truly will be able to do. The reason that we are not fully understanding it and it's not 100 percent ready right now with all these amazing opportunities inside of it is because, as we all know and can take responsibility for our lives and admit, our connections with our clients are not ready for all of it anyway. The reason that it was rolled out the way that it's been rolled out from Family Reunion is to stress the fact that Gary continued to say, please focus on your contacts, get them 100 percent correct. By the time you go through those contacts, I'm going to bet command is 90 percent ready. Your smart plans are going to be up and going. You're going to be able to choose a lot of different things. So please take the time to focus on those contacts first. So the rest of the opportunity for growth inside this technology company is available to you when it's ready. Yes, I have had many conversations where someone's like, I'm waiting until it's ready. And I, I have a standard Don't question wait. now. It's Don't what are you wait. doing? What are you doing using now? And it's always the craziest answer of a non-system you've ever heard. And it's always just like, I have a notebook. <laughs> I write them down in this journal. And you can't, as we know, just like your box of cards, we can't automate that. Um, all right, so we got a couple of questions really quick, and then we're going to let me go upstairs and have my burrito and go to my team meeting. Um, Jan Belcher says, this is a great training session, so nice work, Julia, and she's glad Thank she signed up. Cooper, who asked us a question a few minutes ago, wants to know if wearing orange increases the odds of uh, closing deals. In Knoxville, um, it does. <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I don't know. Go Aggies, maybe. I'm not sure what this color brings. Uh, maybe Auburn, Florida, uh, Alabama. Definitely in Knoxville, this color is very popular. I know nothing about college football, but thank you for pulling out all the schools. Um, <laughs> um, Rich has a uh, question. <laughs> Rich says, go Broncos. I actually wore this to my only Broncos game. Um, Rich, you can reach out to me offline. He said that he's attached some clients, uh, neighborhood to some clients. Does that mean they now have a landing page? You still have to send it to them, Rich, and there is a copy URL link. However, just go into command. You can send a chat message to any single person in the company. Go in there, type in my name, send me a chat message to command, and I will answer you. And if for some reason you get stuck or confused, find Brett Chigrew on Kelly. Um, and then last question, then I maybe will let you go back to calling your clients. Can you share <laughs> the way it's going? You're going to be there for six days. You're going to be there a long time today. <laughs> everyone talks to Julia for 45 minutes. Can okay. you share the script that Gary used about how to contact leads to get their addresses during family reunion? Absolutely we can. I don't have that memorized yet. I need to internalize that. And I am going to guess, excuse me, that if you email um, lab support or, for example, you want to email Maps or Brett, email Brett. He'll get I'm that actually working you. on that. I literally started writing. I watched the vision speech and started writing it down yesterday so that way we could discuss, have a database discussion later. So, Danette, we will do that. I promise. Um, also, was, you can rewatch the vision speeches on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Those are posted. So yeah, I mean, it pretty much it was just like Julia. You called, and you when you lost the connection with somebody, you call. Essentially, his script was, "Hey, I'm sorry, I don't have your address. That's my fault." <laughs> he wasn't as blunt as this, but essentially, what is it? And I will write down that, that script for you, and we'll have that as part of the program. It's sitting literally in my tabs. Is that speech at that moment, and I'm writing Perfect. it down. Um, I figured that people would want to know it. Rich says thank you. And Julia, I say thank you thank for you. joining me here for, heck, over an hour. This is a 30-minute coaching program, and here we are in hour five. <laughs> um, thank you so much for letting this run over.
Thank you for my team for not minding when I walk into a meeting really late. Thank you uh, for allowing me to provide value to our agents. It means a lot. Well, my pleasure. We will see you back here soon to help everybody out. If you want to reach out to Julia, I would give you her info, but you can go to Kelly and you can find Julia Hurley. Yes, please do. Please connect with me on Kelly. And friend her on Facebook and like her business page because you'll be shocked about how many hours a day she works. Thank you guys so much for watching. We will see you for Tech Enable Agent session number 13 really soon. Have a great day.